I want to first give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for one day lifted me up from the dregs of degradation and set me down on a solid rock and establishing my goings and my coming. And for that reason, I say thank you. Give honor to the first lady, first daughter, all the exes, missionary outreach, family, our visitors, and friends. We greet you with Jesus' joy. There's a word from the Lord, and I, I want us to look, and I think we're making good time for we must be going over to Statesville, and immediately after church, they're feeding us, and certainly we want to get there as soon as we leave here, we go directly there, they tell me they have plenty of food, they have plenty of dessert, they cooked a lot of cake, baked a lot of cakes, fried chicken and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's worship at 3 o'clock directly. So certainly we want to be there. We want to uh, sit down and fellowship and eat. And so certainly this is good time. But there's a word from the Lord and I want us to look to. The book of 2 Kings. <coughs> The 13th chapter of the book of 2 Kings, beginning at the 14th verse. 2 Kings, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. When you found it, say, Amen. Amen. You still look and say, Hold on. 2 Kings, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elijah said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. And Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, Open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elijah said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. Let's stop there. That's all we'll have time for. And I want to use for something. It's always better to do things God's way. Amen. It's always better to do things God's way. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. oh neighbor. Amen. It's always better Amen. to do things God's way. Turn to somebody else that they didn't hear you and say, neighbor, Amen. hey neighbor, Amen. it's always better to do things God's way. Amen. Let us pray. Be eternal and ever blessed God. We ask that you bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And Lord, help me not so much to preach a good sermon, but one that will do some good so that the body of Christ may be edified for having heard it. In the glorious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 It's always.
God to do things God's way. You know, when you don't do things God's way, we always find ourselves in trouble. When you don't do things God's way, you can make a mess out of stuff. When you don't do things God's way, you always find yourself in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Unwanted, unwanted trouble. When you don't do things God's way, you find yourself frustrated. When you don't do things God's way, you always find yourself in the rear. When you don't do things God's way, you can find yourself unemployed. When you don't do things God's way, you can find yourself broke. When you don't do things God's way, there's no peace. When you don't do things God's way, there's no when you don't do things God's way, there's hardly any joy. The other day I was talking to a fellow. He said, Rabbi, I ain't been out here, but I'm, I'm fine. I got a car and everything else, but I'm, I'm just having some problems over here. I said, maybe if you did it God's way. See, because it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. Everybody's going to get a little something, something. But when you do it God's way, yeah, you get the full blessing. Everybody going to get a, a crumb. Everybody going to get something from God. But when you do things completely like God asked you to do, you can hardly go wrong. And then when you do things God's way, blessings come about. When you do things God's way, not only are you blessed, but your family members are blessed. Your community is blessed. Your children are blessed. Uh, they are victorious. They are always succeeding when you do things God's way. And then there are those who just refuse to do things God's way and wonder why they're failing in various areas of their life. Could be that you're not doing it God's way. Uh, what scripture said, there's a way that seems right. Proverbs said there's a way that seems right to a man. But it ends in death. Uh, I like what the psalmist David said. Uh, Lord, show me thy way. Uh, and then one uh, in, in Matthew gospel said, Enter ye into the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way. And that's the way that most of us like to go funky, funky, broad way. <laughs> you know, and, 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 but, but uh, uh, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the gate that leads to life. And very few there be. That find it. In other words, a whole lot of us ain't going to find it. A whole lot of us, you know what I'm saying, is going to miss that deep thing. And then, oh, how do you find God's way, preacher? Number one, you, 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 you got to pray before you do anything. You got to pray. You got to pray daily uh, in the morning, in the evening. If you want to know God's way. And Jeremiah said, uh, uh, he, he looked to the Lord and, and to, to choose for him the, the way of the Lord. You've got to do it God's way. He said, and, and, uh, come unto me and ask me and I'll show you great and mighty things. Pray. And then you, you, you do it God's way when you read the word of God. You study the word of God, not only reading it, but you study the word of God. You come to Bible study. You come to Sunday school. How do you know what God's way is if you're not reading God's word? <laughs> to find out what God's way is. How do you know what God's way is if you never come to Bible study? If you hardly ever pick up the word of God. 
How do you know God's way? Then, then, one other writer said, uh, uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts, or so his ways are higher than our ways. Not your way, but, but it's God's way. And then when we look at the text in verse, y'all got time for that? Yeah, many of us find ourselves just like uh, Joash, the king, in the word of God here in the text. Here, uh, he is having trouble. Uh, the Syrian army is going up against Israel. And it seems like they don't have a win in sight. And what does he do? He goes and seeks counsel. Even though he is the king, he realizes that he got sense enough to know that all the knowledge ain't in the king's head. And then although some of us are in positions of leadership and hold certain status and title, you don't know everything. And then the word of God said there's safety in a multitude of counselors. And now here, this king, even though he's over a kingdom, has sense enough to seek God's way. He has sense enough to go to the man of God. He has sense enough to go to the prophet Elijah. And even though Elijah is on his sick bed, ready to die, here King Joash comes to Elijah. And Elijah is familiar with, with winning wars. This is not the first time that he helped God's people win against Syria. And now here he is again, called for his service. And here Joash goes to Elijah while he is on his sick bed. Y'all got time? And he asks him, he tells him the chariots have come, and we in trouble. Israel is in trouble. And Elijah, in his little pony hand, he, he points, he, he says, get your bow and get some arrows. He said, now bring the bow over here. And he brought the bow over and he, he said, now take the bow and, and lift it up. And he, he lifted it up. And Elijah put his hands on Joash's hand, the king's hand. And then he said, now go and lift up the window. And he did just like Elijah had told him. And then he said, now. I want you to shoot an arrow out. And uh, this is for the deliverance of Israel. And this is show, to show that God is a deliverer. And he will deliver you from the Syrian army. Go on, do that. He does that. That's all right. And then he said, now I want you to shoot arrows out. Then they hit the ground. Just shoot all the arrows. And now, here, Joash, he realizes that he's got to do what the prophet said to him, but he's like some of us. We don't, we're not always obedient to God. He's like some of us, but we like to do it our way, not like God tells us to do. And here he's, a lot of Joash takes and shoots three out. To the ground. He doesn't shoot all of them, but he has eight or nine arrows in his quiver. But now, here, yeah, uh, he figures it's enough to shoot three arrows, not realizing that Elisha is helping him to win. Elisha is, is, is got, it, things are set up for him to win. And this is Elisha's way or God's way. To show him how to win God's way. But like some of us, instead of doing it the way God says do it, he does it his way. And three arrows hit the ground. And the prophet is angry and upset, said, You 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 were supposed to shoot all of them, but because of that, <coughs> uh, you'll only be delivered three times. From Syria. You only win three battles here. But now in the fourth one, he was, they were defeated because he had not done it the way God had said it. Yeah. So the man of God is angry, and so it is with some of us. God tells you to do a thing a certain way. We figure we're going to do it our way.
direction or a certain instruction. He said, okay, Lord, the word of God teaches us how to do it here. But we said, no, I'm going to do it my way. And we find ourselves losing on the battlefront of life. We find ourselves being defeated because we only have to do something the way God wanted us to do. Uh, we, we neglected to follow the instructions of God and wonder how we get into a pickle because we wanted to do it God our way. So now, uh, if you want to get blessed in your household, you've got to do it God's way. If you do it God's way, you're, you're more than a conqueror. If you do it God's way, uh, you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field when you do it God's way. You're the head and not the tail when you do it God's way. Only when you're doing it God's way, things are going to turn out right. And then if you want your family, when you do it God's way, your children are blessed. Your family is blessed because you did it God's way. You followed God's instruction. You followed God's rule. If you want the church to be blessed, you got to do it God's way. The choir is going to be blessed. You got to do it God's way. The usher board is going to be blessed. You got to do it God's way. The finance committee is going to be blessed. You got to do it God's way. If the deacons are going to be blessed, you got to do it God's way. If you come into the pulpit and the minister is going to be blessed, you got to do it God's way. Yeah, they could not. The king could not follow instructions. Now, is it? Then you have to look at the observance I, I have here. Uh, in the beginning, you see that he did it right. Elijah says, go get your boy now. He does that. He says, now nah, shoot something out of the way. He does that. He says, you shoot all the boys, but, but, but he shoots three times. He stops. He starts out doing it God's way. But then it stops. And so it is with a whole lot of us. We started out doing Sunday school, but we stopped. We started out going to church every Sunday, but we stopped. We started reading the Word of God every day, but we stopped. We started getting on our knees and praying, but we stopped. We started paying our tithes and offerings in the church, but we stopped. We started teaching our children and bringing our children to church, but we stopped. Stop it out, okay. But we stop. How many of us have been there been like that? Amen. You said I, I, I was, I'm gonna do it this way, and for God I live and for God I die, but I stopped. I said I was gonna do be part of the choir, and I, but I quit, I stopped. I said I was gonna do this, I said I was gonna be here every Sunday, but I stopped. We start, we start out doing God's thing, doing God's way. But somewhere along the line, we stop. Here's the other thing I'm very in the text is that nobody hindered Joash. Nobody stopped him from shooting all the arrows like he was supposed to. Nobody was there to stop him, and some of us, we like to blame other folk. Yeah, so when nobody else is around, you know, we make our own choices. You know, but some of us blame other folk. But what nobody is stopping, you know what I'm saying? So you didn't have nobody to blame it on. You know what I'm saying? And so it is with us. You can't blame your wife, you can't blame your husband. You can't blame the neighbor next door. You can't blame the, the preacher. You can't blame the director of the choir. You can't. You got to stop trying to blame stuff on other folk. And we always look for folk to blame it on. The reason why I act like I do, the reason why I did, because they the blame. But there was nobody there. The blame, you know. So because Joash was disobedient, uh, Israel suffered because of one man. Because of his disobedience, he suffered. Family members suffered because of us. Not doing 
yourself. And there are some relationships that are broken. You understand? Because somebody or two people decided that they weren't going to do it God's way. Or one person decided they weren't going to do it God's way. Some friendships have been broken up because somebody decided I'm not going to do it God's way. Some folks that are at odds with one another because they decided that I'm not going to do it God's way. There's some confusion. There's some chaos. There's some differences between folks, even in the church, because folks are steadfast and not doing it God's way. It's my way or no way at all. Some of us are just stuck. So well, I'm not going to do it. That way I'm not going to behave the way God would have me to behave. And wonder why we're defeated in our relationship. Wonder why we're defeated in our undertakings. Wonder why we're constantly always losing. Always broke, always behind, always uh, need something else, nothing more. And the money, we might have two, three jobs, but that's not enough because we're not doing something God's way. Yeah. And when you're not doing it God's way, you find yourself in trouble. You find yourself in jail. Sometimes you find yourself relapsed. Sometimes you find yourself in addiction. Sometimes you find yourself behind the eight ball because we refuse to do it. God's way. Now, that's the say. Every time, even if when it comes to salvation, where the salvation is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and he has a way for you to get there. If we believe that God, Jesus is the Son of God, and he, he died for our sins, and on the third day he was raised from the dead. See, that's God's way. You get to Jesus Christ. If you're baptized, it comes through Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be, be, be filled with the Holy Ghost, it's going to be through Jesus Christ. That's God's way. Romans 10 and 9 said, if we confess with our mouth yeah. and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. That's God's way. And we're going to come to the altar right. And they got to go through Jesus. God's way. Anything we do, any blessing that we're on the day, anything we receive of God, it, it got to come that way. That Jesus, that's God's way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come except by God's way. So you won't stop struggling. Stop going through the stuff. Stop catching the hell. I dare you to try God's way. Stop struggling. Stop kicking against the prince. You know, it wasn't until uh, Paul decided that he was going to sell that until. And sometimes God will, will play a really trick on you. Sometimes he'll put you in position. You understand? So he can get, get you still. Still enough to know that, hey, it got you, I got you, if I don't do it this way, I'm going to die. Sometimes he'll put us in uncanny positions. You remember Paul when he was on the road to Damascus, persecuting uh, Christians, doing them in the uh, gladiators arena and all of that kind of stuff, and he, he was blind and knocked off his horse. God got his attention. And now he's blind. And now the Lord said, uh, and he tells him, I want you to go uh, uh, send Simon over there at Nazareth's house. He said, I got a blind man who for that. And if you don't go over there and speak to him, he'll be a blind man for the rest of his life. Huh? He had to get his attention. <laughs> and he knocked him off this horse. He said, so, so why are you persecuting me? Who are you? I'm the Lord of Jesus Christ, whom you're persecuting. Huh? He had not been doing it God's way at first. But now after he was blinded and the, the scale falls off his eyes, from that point on he began to do it God's way. And from that point on he began to bless and be a blessing and wrote 
almost 13 books in the Bible. Because they did it God's way. When are we going to stop kicking against the pricks and start doing it God's way? And if any blessings are going to come, if we're going to be winning in life, if we're going to our children won't win, if you want them to win, it behooves us to do it God's way. And be able to say with the song like, for God I live and for God I die. And continue to sing the song, I want to thank you. And I'll be praising you and thank you for the rest of my life. And that's when you determine, no matter what, I'm going to do it God's way. I find somebody next to you and say, it's time to do it God's way. Now, turn somebody else's time to do it God's way.